My name is Lee Davis, I am one of the Fungarium curators here at Kew Gardens and I look after Kew's scientific collection of fungi. Kew has the biggest and probably the best scientific collection of fungi in the world. Uh, we have about 1.3 million specimens. We have uh, fungi here collected by Charles Darwin when he was on the Voyage of the Beagle. We have a poisonous fungus which was the first instance of death cap poisoning in Australia and we add about 4,000 specimens a year to the collections from all over the world. I'm really interested in zombie fungi, so these fungi that um, are parasites of insects. And there's a particular species which infects and does nasty things to cicadas. The very extreme manipulation of its host is, is possibly the pinnacle of insect parasites. So this fungus, it's a thing called uh, Massaspora cicadina. So what happens is the infected cicada, when it emerges out of the ground after 17 years living as a larva, um, they're infected and the fungus produces a number of chemicals which alter the cicada's behaviour. One of them is an amphetamine um, that's normally only found in an East African plant. The other is a hallucinogenic compound that we normally associate with magic mushrooms. The first thing the fungus does is eat the gonads of the cicada, so they can't actually reproduce. And they make the back end of the cicada drop off. And then a tuft of fungal tissue hangs out the back of the cicada, spreading spores. So you have these adult cicadas spreading spores as they move, who are crazed trying to reproduce and mate as much as they can whilst infused with hallucinogens and amphetamines. I was intrigued. <laughs> so up until the middle of 2021, we only had a single specimen of this fungus, Massaspora cicadina, in the collection, and that was from the 1930s um, in North America. It was only a partial specimen and it wasn't in the best condition. The cicadas emerge in broods on a 17 year cycle. And 2021 was when brood X was due to emerge. This also happens to be coincidentally the same brood as our existing damaged specimen. So this is a once in a 17 year opportunity to get a specimen of the same fungus from the same brood of cicadas. I couldn't go to the US myself, partly because of their restrictions on travel um, regarding COVID, and also the emergence is a fairly narrow window. So being in the right place at the right time was quite difficult. I had this slightly crazy idea that I could possibly contact people online through Twitter and get some specimens of cicadas that way. Mycologists are generally, there's not many of them in the world, they're quite rare. So social media has been a really useful tool as a way of communicating and keeping in touch with mycologists all over the world. Um, and also people who aren't professional mycologists, if you like, but amateurs who are interested. Because it allows you to get those images and questions and comments in front of a, an audience of people who you wouldn't normally have access to. I'm in contact with people who study insects and fungi in North America anyway, so I was kind of hoping one of them might be in touch, but I think because there were lots of people resharing it, that network just spread exponentially. So that the first response I had was somebody saying they have those cicadas coming up near them, and I think their mother had cicadas in her garden. So I think the very first response was a result, was a positive result immediately. And that kept going and then within the space of about a week I had several people who had seen them and were collecting them and were going to send them to us. It was amazing. So I think the first ones arrived in late July of 2021. There were five of them pinned like a professional entomologist would do in a box. They were beautiful. It was a bit like Christmas, much better than socks. The specimens have already been databased and incorporated into our collection. 
One of my colleagues has managed to culture the fungus and we've already extracted the DNA from that culture with a view to getting that sequenced. There is so much out there to still discover about fungi. You know, we, we barely scratch the surface of understanding what species are out there, let alone their ecologies and their interactions with other organisms. By communicating and forming networks and sharing what we have, we can actually build up our understanding much more efficiently and much more effectively. Massospora cicadina has become one of my favourite specimens in the collection and is definitely one of the weirdest. Mm -hmm.